Okay, joined now from London by Vion correspondent Mandy Clark. Uh, Mandy, hopefully you're ready for the game. Uh, what's the mood out there in, in London? Are fans uh, optimistic? There wasn't too much hype about this England team, especially after decades of underachievement. But uh, have the performances in, in the opening phase of this tournament, have fans started to believe now? Absolutely. And the, the, the term believe has been plastered all over the tabloids, the tabloid newspapers, the strongest supporters of the English team. Um, you're right. As starting off at this tournament, there wasn't a lot of expectation, and that seems to have played to England's advantage. Um, right now, even in midday, there are people who are chanting uh, football songs saying that England's going all the way. So there's certainly a lot of high spirits in the UK. It's also a heat wave, so the pubs are packed. Everyone will be watching this game, and there's a lot of expectation on England to pull it off. You shouldn't have said pubs are packed. Ashley Westwood is missing London right now, Mandy. But uh, about the game coming up right now, Colombia, you spoke about belief. Do they now believe that England can beat Colombia, or is there guarded optimism, especially because of the way Colombia play? I think uh, it's exuberant optimism. Um, there's been a, it's been a a chaotic World Cup where, you know, Germany going out had England fans uh, ecstatic. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of hope that they can take it on. They, they do respect Colombia. They are a very strong players. So uh, there's, um, you know, there's an understanding that this won't be a cakewalk, but there's a lot of hope among English fans that they can pull it off. Okay, I can see the excitement in your voice, Mandy. Go on, enjoy the game, and hopefully we see you celebrating tomorrow morning. That's the view from uh, England. Let's give you the lineups then for this game and let's start with England because they have gone back to their first choice 11 after rotating eight players in their last match. A one will defeat to Belgium. That means the likes of Harry Kane, Raheem Sterling, Jordan Henderson, Kirian Trippier and Harry Maguire are all back in the team. Deli Ali has also recovered from injury and replaces Ruben Loftus-Cheek in the middle of the park. Jensen is gone with his strongest lineup. Hopefully they're recharged rested and they don't carry the scars from that uh, defeat to Belgium. Obviously, they have, he, he, they're definitely a good rest that he's given them and it's good to see Ali back in the team. Uh, creativity from his, from his part. They've got good, great players up front. Kane, top scorer at the moment. Sterling, Lingard and it would be interesting to see Rashford coming in later on. Okay, the big news for Colombia is that their star man, James Rodriguez, is not fit to start this game after he suffered a leg injury in their previous match against Senegal, Jefferson Lerma slots into the team in what looks like a three-man midfield with Juan Quintero, Juan Cuadrado and Radimel Falcao making up a makeshift three-man front line. A big, big loss for them, that one. No, James? Yeah, huge loss. Um, but, you know, it's not all about one player. You know, they've got big, big hopes of Quintero. Uh, they actually, they were, they were playing a 4-2-3-1 when James was playing and, and Quintero has been doing that well. He was mm. occupying the number 10 role and James was going out to the left-hand side so he kind of dislodged him because he's in so fine form. Two real good centre-halves, Mina and Sanchez, one Barcelona, one Tottenham. So these are a strong, strong side and obviously the goals and reliability strength of Falcao up front, you know, this is, this is going to be a very, very tough game. Eugene, the question, you know, we heard Mandy there talking about optimism, that there's belief. But how good have England actually been? They've only beaten Tunisia and Panama. Is that a worry ahead of this game? No, I, I wouldn't say it's a worry. I, they, they've got great players who are playing at really big top clubs in England and I feel they've got the motivation and the, 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 the hunger in them. You, could see, you can see the hunger in them and I, I feel it's a change England team compared to the previous years and they look like they want to create history. So they're very optimistic and I feel, they're very, I feel on their part as well that they can really do well. Okay, he's talking about history, but it's that burden of history, isn't it, Ashley? I mean, you're a very proud Englishman. You've played football with the likes of Phil Neville, Gary Neville, David Beckham uh, and that generation. You've seen this great generation of players underachieve, in a sense, uh, at, at the top level, at the World Cups, quarterfinals and not beyond that. Uh, the fans as well have been wondering why haven't been be able to go all the way. This team, not too much pressure, not too much pressure coming into a tournament. But, uh, you know, sometimes when the pressure's off, the results could come. Yeah, I mean, it's got a, you know, a no expectation feel of it. They've incorporated the media that's been a, a huge plus. 
and we know that secretly that this campaign wasn't going to be the one that we're trying to aim for. Yes, we want to win it, but it's going to be the next one, you know, in four years' time, because all this team will be together in four years' time. I think we've only got one one player over the age of 30 in, in the whole squad. You know, we're now the youngest team left in the competition, so that's given us the opportunity to go out there, play with freedom, have a good crack at it, see what happens, but knowing that we're on a building process still, we're mm. on a, a transition process. You know, we've come with this three at the back, three, five, two, if you like, to try and, you know, outplay, play teams from the back and it's all been a huge kind of a, a five to ten year plan from the FA you know they've got this English DNA now that all the academies abide to and it's been a long long process and then we're now starting to see lots of young players come through and we're starting to get success because we've been you know stripped back and we've been going in at the academies and, and changing everything the way we play the way that we stand for you know classic English used to be 4-4-2 four, four, mm. long ball fitness fight scrap now all of a sudden we've got loads of technical players so it's starting to change. You can see the excitement in his voice. <laughs> Let me ask you the uncomfortable question then. Do England start underdogs in this game? Uh, I don't think so. I think the underdogs would be Colombia. Uh, England have got too much power, too much like depth in their team. And they've got a good amount of experience at a high level. I know the quality of football that they play in. So I, I would say the Colombians would be underdogs. Okay, Ashley, let's get straight into the tactical battles because when I look at England, when I look at Colombia, you think that midfield, even though James is not playing, you have Quadrado, Quadrado, Quintero playing. England, you think, have to win the battle of the midfield. Is Jordan Henderson going to be the most important man for England today in the centre yeah, of the I park? Think, I think, obviously, we expected Colombia to be a 4-2-3-1. That was a lot hinged on whether James would play. Uh, England, we knew, was going to be a 3-5-2. Um, and I think it looks now that Colombia have just changed and that's because of obviously the numbers and the dominance that England have in midfield. And when we look at it a little bit further up, it will be, you know, we expected there to be a kind of a number 10 man for Colombia. Mm. But I think we now realise that that's not going to happen. Um, you know, we, that they're going to drop back into more of a, a three man midfield if you want. And they're going to try and match England up in the middle, you know, a 3v3 in the central areas. Obviously, when England defend, you know, when we're, when, we're at, when we're trying to stop the Colombians playing, you'll, you'll see the Colombians slip into these kind of positions to try and put some pressure. But England will drop into a back five. But whichever way you look at it, it's, it's how the teams quickly move from attack to defence in transition. So as soon as England get the ball, straight away we try and push our, our wing backs on, straight up, up the pitch, and we flatten out a three across the back and make the pitch as big as possible. That then probably makes Colombia try and drop back. So it's going to be a, a kind of a game of cat and mouse. If we can move that ball nice and mm. quick, we may catch the Colombian too wide of their attacking three, if you like, up the pitch. And then straight away we have a 5v3 in the middle. But if Colombia are decent and well drilled, they'll try and get back nice and quick. And okay. they'll drop into this position. And then them themselves will become a five-man midfield. So that's the way the game will swing backwards and forwards. So it's, it's all to do with speed of pass, speed of transition. The other plus side that England have got, they obviously have uh, Lingard in the middle that likes to make real forward runs. Mm. So that, again, is another game of cat and mouse. Deli Alli is exactly the same. He's going to want to try and get this side of their midfielders. Right. So, again, the battle becomes... You know, these two midfielders, can the Colombian midfielder stop Lingard? Mm. Can the other Colombian midfielder stop, obviously, Deli Alli? And all of, a, all of a sudden, you start to see matchups all over the pitch. Okay. And whoever handles that the better will obviously come out on top. We've got the added pace of, of Sterling down the right-hand side, if you like. He's going to try and stretch their defenders. But the more England start to stretch the Colombian defence, the more space we start to get into this position, and then the more space it becomes, Deli Alli starts to become an influence in the attacking perspective. So there's loads of different battles going on. But long and short of it is, it's going to be a 5-5 five and five in the middle, depending on, on how fast teams move from attack to defence. Are you, are, you, are you seeing lots of goals in this match, considering... Uh how England have played, how Colombia have played? I think it'll be a tight game. Okay, Eugenson keeps it short and simple. He thinks it will be a tight game. So, who will seize the moment? Can England end decades of underachievement or, or will Colombia's flair carry them through? Ashley Westwood and Eugenson Lingdo will be back at 6.30pm on Wednesday to look back on that game. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Ashley, hope it doesn't go to penalties, just for your sake. Relax, your team will hopefully... Uh, Give us a cracking contest to make up for the one we've just seen. Time to say goodbye.